Hi, this is Tessa Keo, and if it's Tuesday, it's time for Tuesday's tip here at the Legacy Virtual Users Group community. And I thought in light of a couple of questions that we got this week in the community, we would spend our time talking about tagging. But first, before we get there, I wanted to give you just a few tips on getting around in the community. So here we are in the Google Plus community and you can tell that I'm signed in because that is my Google Plus name. I'm in the home section but if we were to come over to communities and click on that you'd see all of the communities that I belong to. Now this is a great way to really focus on the things you're interested in whether it's genealogy in general whether it's country related, perhaps it's technology related. In any event, there's a number of genealogy and other communities, so you should take a look. But right now we're going to go to the Legacy Virtual Users Group community. And you'll see that the most recent post is in the stream, and that's what this middle section here is referred to. Now if you come over here to the left hand side, you will see all of the posts, and that just shows what all of the topics are. You'll see that there is the general topic of discussion and then there are particular ones. And what I'd like to draw your attention to are probably two of the most important ones. The first one is guidelines. So if you're new to the community, definitely click on guidelines, scroll to the beginning, and that will show you the first um, post that I put in on guidelines. And if you expand the post, it will show you the entirety of the post. And the point of it was to give you a little bit of background, what our group is about, to give you the lay of the land, tell you the few rules that we do have, the types of things you can post, and the types of things that we don't want posted here. After you've finished reading it, you can collapse it, and then you can scroll up to anything else that's in the guidelines, things that we've entered since then that also refer to changes that we're making to the community, things that we'd like you to pay attention to. So read the guidelines when you first join, and then check back every once in a while. Another really good section to be aware of is getting to know you. And this is where we'd like you to come the first time you're in the community and introduce yourself. So what you'd be doing is just typing in your post. You'd click on this section here that gives you the topics and choose getting to know you. And then after you've typed in what you want, then you just click on share. And finally, Another really helpful one to be aware of is the LVUG Hangouts. And this is where we're going to post the archived versions of the Hangouts. You can always go to the YouTube channel or to the site, but they'll be here. And we're hoping everybody comes to the community within the next month or so to just make it a one-stop shopping place, so to speak. But something that would be helpful is to take a look at again scrolling to the beginning, um, the information that we shared at the outset about the Hangouts. And that was also published on March 26th, which is when our community went live, and it explains how the, commun how the Hangouts work here on the LVUG community. Now keep in mind that every community might have a little bit different way of doing it, so it's a good idea to take a look either in their guideline section or their Hangout section to find out how you can attend a Hangout and um, just some helpful tips. So there you have it in the Legacy Virtual Users Group community. We're glad you're here and we hope you take a few minutes to get a lay of the land, know what the few rules are, and just make your life a little bit easier as you move around and negotiate the community. Now the other thing I'd like to tell you is don't worry if you don't get your post into the correct topic. Um, or if you don't know exactly where to ask a question, just go ahead and post it because the moderators have the ability to move the post where it should be. So we're all trying to figure this out and I'm sure we're going to shake out a few more changes before we get much farther into it. So yet again, we're happy you're here and we look forward to seeing you at our May Hangout. Now I thought that we would 
talk about Leslie's question. She recently joined the Legacy Virtual Users Group community, and by way of introduction, she told us that she'd been using Legacy for about six years, but doesn't feel she gets much beyond the basics and hasn't used many of Legacy's functions. And right now, she's trying to prepare for a research trip in August, and she wants to learn more about tagging. And as to both to-do lists and tagging, two areas that she's working with right now, I'd encourage you to watch the archived Legacy Virtual User Group Hangouts. Linda McCauley did an excellent job of showing us how she uses tagging and searches. But even then, we really only skimmed the surface of the features. And we also address them on a more intermediate or perhaps advanced level. So right now, I thought maybe we'd go back and break tagging down for Leslie just a bit. So first of all, with tagging, why use it? Well, tagging is just simply the ability to mark something, and you can do it for individuals and marriages. And the four areas to really think about with tagging are identification, issues, research, and reports. Tagging, where to find it? You go to Edit, and then click on Tag Records, and that will bring up a box that's Advanced Tagging, and you'll see Individual, Advanced, and Tag Descriptions. Tagging, how to customize it. If you have watched any of the videos I've done, you'll realize that I'm very visual, and so one of the first things I did was I went into Options, clicked on Customize, played around with the colors. You can click to change those, and really use any colors you want for your tags. And keep in mind that Legacy has uh, everything, all of the tags, with a color scheme, but you can choose your own. So first of all, when you're in advanced tagging, what you can pay attention to here is individual tagging, the person's name, and then the tags are listed here. And if something is filled in, it's lit up. Advanced tagging is where you go in to change what's going on in your tagging. And finally, your tag descriptions, a really good idea, and I would definitely suggest this, to go ahead and type in those descriptions when you set up a tag, because Trust me, you will not remember if you don't fill in those descriptions. I've done it myself. And I also thought I'd show you where in options you can customize your tags. And it's right here in this section. If you just click on your tags, you can change any of the colors you want. And I also wanted to show you first where tags show up. In the family view, the individual's tags show up here, whichever three you've chosen to show. And the marriage tags show up down here the same idea, the three tags that are showing. Keep in mind that for your individual tags and your marriage tags, you always have the ability to scroll between them in the family view. And that's something to keep in mind when you're working with your tagged items. So now let's go live and click around in Legacy. All right, this should be familiar to you because I just showed it to you, but this is Petter Erickson. And right now, the only tag that is highlighted is tag number nine. And as you can see, tags five, six, and nine are what's available. And you might say, well, why is that? And I'll show you, because I've gone to Edit, Tag Records, and what shows up is my advanced tagging. Petter Erickson. Now here, I haven't asked for that tag to show, but the other tag that is showing is two. And if you look down here, you'd see that he's from my uh, maternal direct line. Tag number nine is anything that I've tagged that requires work. If I have issues or I know I've forgotten to source something or I need to clean something up, this is what I use tag nine for. Now, I have a number of them open right now, uh, but the tags that, that I have showing and if we clicked on that, you could see that I've selected five, six, and nine, but it could the default is one, two, and three, and it could be anything you choose. You just go right here to that arrow and choose whichever one you want. You could move it up, but right now I'm there. It's because I've been working with newspapers. Obits of Nebraska is a program through their historical society that uh, does obituaries for Nebraska, and I've been using Genealogy Bank. So that's what's up there right now, and then requiring work. If you wanted to make changes in advanced tagging, perhaps you wanted to clear all the tag numbers for everyone, um, this is the button that you'd click on. 
perhaps you want to tag or untag people by family, everyone, everyone in a search list, an entire family line, descendants or ancestors. And this is where you'd be working with it. You'd be making those changes in a particular tag. So just be careful that if you're working with this, you don't undo all of your tagging work by deleting it. So right now we're going to take a look at Options and Customize. And we're going to go to Colors and that's what brings up these tags here. And that's what happens if you click on any of these numbers and select a color, that's how you get it. So be sure and do anything you want with that to make legacy understandable to you. I'd point out that something I've done here is my maternal line is red, my paternal line is blue, and obviously that's following along with that um, four color scheme of blue and green for your paternal lines, red and yellow for your maternal lines. So you could do it any way you want, but that's a good way to think about your colors. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, obituaries are in black. Um, just use anything you want for that. Newspapers are in yellow. Now let's take a look at the specific question we got. If you're doing a search, you would be looking at, um, I always like to work with a detailed search unless I'm working with particular census lists. So perhaps what Leslie was wondering about, um, I believe she mentioned St. Louis. Maybe she wanted to know all individuals that died in a particular place. What you do here is just choose whether that's birthplace, death place, burial place, and fill in that information, or perhaps it's an event. Choose whatever it is. And then you could say, the next one down, I always say contains, and I've just picked a place, right, Minnesota, because I don't believe I have anyone in St. Louis. My second condition is that the death date is before 1960, and I'm just doing it for purposes right now of showing you a list and how I'd work with it. So I always have this mark to clear the list before a search so that my search results don't have a lot of different information in it, only the information in that particular search. So those are my two conditions and let's see if I get any one. Alright, my search brought back 34 individuals including married names and the search was for individuals who died in Wright County, Minnesota before 1960. So. It gives me this list and we could take a quick look at it, but as you can see, all of these people are in Wright County. Come down here just to show you. You know, for instance, you're going to get all of the cities once you've only limited it by a county. And so you're going to have to be careful and really pay attention to what type of search you're doing. But if you have all of those individuals and you wanted to look up, um, for instance, you made your tagging here um, item number six because you were going to be finding all of these people in a newspaper or perhaps you're going to go to that county and look them all up uh, in the historical society. What you do once you have this list is you come to options and you go to advanced tagging and you could tag all of those people you could give them a number Right now, let's go ahead and say that we want number seven because I have this blank. And we'll call this a county death search. And I'm also going to say that I want it to show over here seven. And I save that. Now I want it to tag everyone in that search list with a seven. So let's see if this works. Now as you can see, they're all tagged. Now you could work from this list. You could also print the list out by playing around with the list report options and getting the actual report that you want and that will do as a separate uh, tip. Um, but you have all of these individuals tagged and so you could take that with you and you could scroll through the list of tags. So let's go ahead. We've tagged them all. We can close this. If I came here and I said I wanted to use 7, it would bring up 
everyone it's going to work through everyone who is tagged here with number seven and as you can see since I put my description in it also shows up the title I gave it Wright County Death Search so I could scroll backwards and forward everyone on this list who's tagged with a seven and I could see if I could find the information or whatever I wanted to do so that's one simple way of showing you if you had an individual search and you tagged everyone how you would work with it in your genealogy program. So I hope that gave you a little bit of a flavor for how to use tagging, where to find it, and how to take those tags and put them into um, a search result. And be sure to check out all of our Tuesday's tips at the Legacy Virtual Users Group community here on Google+.